from here, I would like to say um, we have a sort of talking points document that we are looking at and using as a way to guide these open discussions. So with that, this session that we're doing next comes from a conversation that was uh, begun a couple of months ago at one of our regular Wednesday taxon work support sessions. And the questions revolved around things like, well, what do we do or work on next? Um, how do we build our communities? The kind of things Davide began to allude to in his talk, just as a good starting place for this. And Brian Fisher also hinted at this. What's, what is Taxon Works allowing him to do with regard to growing the Antwerp community and empowering people? So we have communities at different stages of maturity. Um, we're asking how we can ensure that these communities are sustained over time. And this reflects sort of a, a need to adopt a, a growth mindset, an open mindset. Uh, and so with that, uh, Matt, would you like to ask the in initial question? <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think our initial question was, you know, we have a panel of people here um, that have all been growing their communities. They've seen their communities transi transition from single people uh, working over decades to maybe groups of people, or maybe they have a very mature project that, you know, has been running on full cylinders for years or they're coming from a, you know, a student who's trying to re-engage and revitalize a community. And I think our opening question was, um, feel free to just chime in. We're not gonna necessarily go through everybody, but what keeps you up at night with respect to um, what your community does and um, could do and should do? Um, so what do you think about, and it doesn't have to be necessarily negative. It could be something that's exciting. Um, what do you, what keeps you up at night? What buzzes in your head about the community that, that you're a part of? And we're happy to have one of you that's on the panel uh, go first. We'll pick you if you don't volunteer. <laughs> well, I'll go first. This is Jim Woolley. Uh, I guess, first of all, in the Universal Calcedonia database, when Matt and John Harity and John Noyes and I moved it, ported it from Natural History Museum to to Taxon Works. We, you know, explicitly, you know, had in mind a model of of you know community curated database. You know, so that one person, John Noyes, who had kept up with it for thirty or forty years, you know, would not have to do it all. And there's only one John Noyes. None of us can keep up with him. And, and and so that has that has pretty much worked. I think we, we we're fortunate in that we have an, an active community, with, uh, some you know younger younger workers in addition to you know the old dinosaurs like Harity and I, uh, and and so you know we're we're pretty much keeping up. The emphasis is on you know taxonomic database. So, uh, but you know as part of that we're doing images and post information, all the rest of it. I guess what keeps me up at night, though, is this growing backlog of, you know, non-taxonomic literature. We've got something like 500 papers, and there's just no way that, do, you know, doing things the old-fashioned way, uh, you know, one person sitting down at a keyboard one paper at a time, that we're even, that we're even going to be able to catch up. Uh, so that's, that's, I think, the biggest challenge that, that, that we have. Um, thanks for that. I am not sure at this point. I guess if you can, can you make it quick, Donut? So we. Yeah, I can make it quick. So, one experiment we do is to take all these publications, like new publications, put them in biodiversity, EMC as supplement materials, and and OCR them in a quick and dirty way, which then allows you to do do a lot of this this um interactions and the data extractions you want. Yeah, Donna, we have got that corpus uh, and with through thanks to the global names processing, you know, we've we've ripped through how do you trust the largest corpus of accessible literature in the world with global names. And we are constantly thinking about how to extend that to 
um, our interfaces and to na data that's beyond names. So I see Maria Marta wants to chime in with what keeps her up at night. Well, I don't know if it, it doesn't allow me to sleep. <laughs> I am a good sleeper, but okay. But no, uh, our community has been spoiled by our database, but that, by, by the way that uh, I am I am the project leader, leader of the Orthoptera species file. It's a database that has been running for over 25 years and uh, mostly in the infrastructure of a species file software. And in September last year, we moved, we migrated to Taxon Works. And so what we do with our community, we, we have support from the Orthoptery Society and uh, the classification that is uh, based uh, most in, in the most recent published uh, papers and the data that we have in OSF is being cited I would say, but most of the people working in Orthoptera. So in that respect, it's good that uh, OSF is really being used. And we update it thanks to our editor, Holger Brown, and an assistant editor, Belen, uh, on a daily basis. So that is working. And what we are doing now is to have uh, meetings, monthly meetings with our community, because uh, we have grants uh, for students mostly to take images or capture images of uh, type specimens and also specimens in nature. And we help them to get used to editing in taxon works and also using filters. We have developed uh, documents for helping in that uh, respect. But what we really keeps me awake is that um, they still, we don't see it that it's being used a lot for research or that our community have, has not seen the usefulness of uh, using the filters in taxon works yet. But I think that's a, a, a matter of time. Maybe in the future, we'll get more people uh, to, be, to be knowledgeable of all the a potential of using the filters and, and using OSF and the database for their research. That is something that it could be, for me, it's a pri priority now that, it, that our community get used to using not only just uh, uh, to look at the new names or look at the nomenclature or synonyms, but use it uh, use because we also have images uh, uh, of a type specimens. We have a lot of um, distribution records, specimen records and songs, and we illustrate the, the species are very well illustrated. But what I would really like to see in the future is that, that our uh, community use it more for um, research. Dimitri. Uh, Thanks, Maria I would say I will just uh, probably repeat many things which uh, Maria Marta and the video say uh, about the community. From my experience, uh, bringing people to the project, I mean, if you we wish to have more people working on the database, that's true. Uh, the reality is, if you try to bring everybody to the project, you will constantly feel that you fail. Uh, people have their own way to do research, uh, especially people with established career, so they know how to do things and they don't want to do it differently. Younger people, a little bit easier to influence, uh, but again, it's a uh, case by case. Uh, from my experience, we have pretty good success with grant application. So we have multiple grants uh, supporting data entry to the database. And uh, my feeling it's actually a more successful part. Engaging the community, giving you some uh, input on the database, finding errors in the database, uh, missing data in the database, sending you PDF publications, uh, trying to present data on the conferences so people will see what you can do with the database. If somebody is really interested and jump to the project, if, if it's uh, one person of them, I think you feel success with uh, your community growing. 
And uh, I also feel success when I go to a meeting. I just been to uh, uh, International Ordinary meeting. Uh, if I see slides from the database and three, five presentations, I think it's already a uh, success for the community growing. Who else on the panel would like to chime in or other people? Uh, Jennifer, yeah. So several things. One of the things that I really like about Hapson Works is that it precisely gets to that point where more than one person can do the work. And in the case of my community, we have specialists that are knowledgeable about their local fauna. So bringing that international expertise definitely enriches the community by a lot. And that also creates this sense of um, ownership, right? So you are curating the data for your particular region and that makes it the, even better. Like uh, that ownership of, uh, I can manage data for my particular region because that's what I'm interested in, that helps a lot, but then yeah, as Maria Marta was saying, it's just that not everyone uses it. So it, it's like you can bring people together, but at the same time, by the way it works that you're curating data in a private way, then that kind of doesn't let everyone see the progress. And they learn about what is being done what things need improvement, what things have been covered already, where can I actually help with this if the data are not publicly available in a, I don't know, like for example, this morning when Samantha was showing all the progress that she has been doing with her particular project on Anthrilids, is that one of the big advantages of that one in particular is that it's already public. As soon as she edits, everything can be pushed and uh, people can see it. And that also brings the issue of, for example, one of the challenges that I have had is that a lot of the type specimens of the species that I uh, study are in international museums and they, some museums not necessarily are very open with, these are the images that are available and anyone can use this. Use this. Uh, it's more like you can use them, but privately. So it, they can only be in your computer. So it's it's many layers of, yes, we want to be open, but at the same time, have to respect the way some institutions work. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like this is very random assemblage of ideas. Well, I think what you're saying is that there's a complicated process, maybe, if I can put words in your mouth, and what you lose sleep about is knowing that that process is complicated, that not all of the data is made free, like some of it is. And now that means that you have to juggle that world and you have to understand, I've got to do this for this and this for this and this for this, and I've got a really diverse group and that makes everything harder. So I see two more hands. Davide, I want to go to you first and then Maria Marta. Yeah, uh, I have a sort of different perspective uh, among everyone. I think I'm sort of uh, the one behind at least the, the, the youngest in starting this project. So in, in the economic community, for instance, we have a different uh, problem. We never had a real community uh, like Calcidoid uh, or like Maria was, was saying. Um, everything was handed over to uh, uh, DQ for the tax apart. So people will send in stuff and he will upload it into a database and everybody will buy that database and use the data right so it was very top down or surely not community when we lost that um, a sort of community started to 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 rise up but uh, as we immediately uh, discovered uh, while we're talking about the, the young people within the community is that it's a sort of um, Again, top down. We are the researchers. We are the people in charge in museums or in the universities. 
um, we don't want to do that kind of work, but we are not even supporting uh, this sort of work done by others. So what keeps up me at night and actually keeps me up at night is how to breach as a student this sort of wall that I feel that there is. I cannot be trusted. Maybe I will move on at some point because if I don't have a, um, a steady job, maybe they think that I could move out of the demonet, so I will possibly lose the project. I'm not sure. Uh, all this kind of thing. How can I breach that sort of big wall, thick wall that I have? And and what also Jennifer was saying is true. But we, for instance, for for my kind of community, we are not even there. All right. So we are not even at that point where we need to worry about it. A friend of mine, Filippo, always telling me, yeah, yeah, that's too much ahead. Let's think about this first because we need to fix this one first. And yeah, so um, for me, there is a lot of individualism in our community. So we cannot really talk about community. I try to put it together. I really hoped that doing this work we could bring together the people, at least in one thing, not always work together, not always doing everyone doing the work, but at least uh, uh, be hopeful that this will be the future in some way. Uh, it never happened. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, so. Yeah, I hope it keeps you up at night as well. So it's not just me. Yeah, I, I didn't mean to give you all the press like this. So. No, no, thanks. I think it's a real, I think it, I think Davide, what you're saying, and I think what we think about, especially one of the reasons we helped, we hired uh, Debbie as a, you know, community liaison is how can we catalyze, like we, we love your passion and vision for what could be done, but we realize that we need to be able to catalyze that. And that doesn't just happen like, as Nikki mentioned really early on, we didn't just say, go help Davide, right? That requires plans, that requires talking to administrators, that, that requires a lot of hard work to figure out how to be able to catalyze, um, yeah, Nikki says, not young, early career, um, early career researchers so that, um, and, and, and see them, you know, be just as moving or powerful movers through a community as people later on in their careers. Maria Marta had hand up next, I think. Did Maria Marta no, just- No, I, I, I want oh, to unmute so. it and I was just pressing in the hand. Uh, no, the other thing that I didn't mention is that maybe it's helpful for others' projects is that uh, what we have, we don't have those barbecue meetings that Jim uh, use, is used to have, that our community has to um, uh, simultaneously uh, uh, curate the database. But what we do have besides those monthly meetings is that uh, we um, uh, suggest uh, the students or those who start editing taxon works uh, to use first as a sandbox. Uh, we we keep on a practice database, a sandcastle database. And so they just upload images or specimen records or edit as OSS, OSF, the database. And we keep on checking if everything is fine and the, the way that they are entering the data is okay. So uh, that is also being very helpful for us uh, to help in the curve, the learning curve, of those that uh, helps us editing the database. That is something that I forgot. Besides, besides the documents for helping into uh, using the filters and adding data, besides the meetings, the monthly meetings that we have, we also um, have this sandcastle or what we call practice database that is being updated, not, not as frequently, of course, as and the real one that goes directly to the public uh, but it's, I don't know, something every month or every three months now, the last one was, <laughs> I think last year was updated. But that is being useful for us too. That's something that I wanted to mention because perhaps it could be helpful for other projects. I think 
Jim is next. Thank you, Mia Marta. Jim. Unmute myself. <laughs> I think Davide brought up some very important points, and and you know, in terms of it, it, inevitably, one or a few people are going to be the ones that that push these projects forward. And you know, it's great to see it's great to see people like Samantha, you know, and and Jennifer, uh, and and Davide getting involved. These are early career people, you know. But I mean, looking at looking at our experience, I. I retired in 2017, and so I have a lot more time now to work on this kind of stuff. I, I couldn't do what I'm doing now 10 years ago. It just never would have worked. You know, I wouldn't get any professional credit for it. You know, administrators at Texas A&M count grant dollars, and they, they count publications, and they count students, you know, and this kind of work doesn't generate any of that. And, and so I think to some degree, you know, you just have to get lucky that somebody's willing to step forward and, you know, and drive the drive, you know, and, and drive the project, drive the project forward. That's all. Um, That's for, very true. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. I think this key point, what we have time for, and this point you're making about not to get credit for it, that's a recurring theme that we have hopefully ideas for how to poke at that also at different levels. I wanted to add a brief point to people like Davide and others who could bring up the challenge of building community that we, from the educational background that I have, please know that science tells us we teach the way we are taught. So the processes or the way we've traditionally done these things is the way we tend to propagate doing them. So to actively take a step toward doing them in a slightly different way taking on new models and new methods of trying to be inclusive, trying to build processes and tools that make that more uh, easier to do, uh, learning new ways to uh, format your data in order to make it more accessible and findable, usable more quickly by things like GBIF at the aggregator level or the researcher level or the educational outreach level, whatever that is. This takes time, and you are the ones as you begin to do that, that ripple takes time. And just to, to know, I guess I'm trying to encourage you to prevent being discouraged, right? That it's a it's a process to change the way we do things. Yes. Donut's hand went up next, I think. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's an answer on, on, on the bad sleeping thing. So this morning we had a discussion with our main founder. It's about the future of bio bioinformatics infrastructure funding. And what he said is that the future of big funding is to be to fund big in infrastructures. So not just small ones, a little bit database there, but really global infrastructures. And so what I could offer, and I think what we should do is we should actually pull all our, start pulling, for example, all our publications. So we make them all accessible. And we have a way we can use Zenodo, we can upload them, we can make Zenodo the global repository for all this biodiversity literature. And we can add a lot of interesting metadata, we can use that, we can make a ICNUMON community, we can make a allies community. So you essentially have access, you can manage it, but at the same time, it's open to everybody. I think we should really consider that. The second point is, you all talk about AI now. And AI is mainly dominated by huge companies. They suck in all what we do, and we don't have access to it anymore. And we don't know what we get out of these chat GPTs and so on. But we could do build up our own trained chat GPT by pulling all this data, these publications we have, and make them really accessible. And I think we really, if you're concerned about this, you should do that. The, the last point which makes me tired and sleepless in a way is that the very little uptake of publications in, in this world. We, we talk about digitization, we talk about, like we look about um, taxonomic databases, but the value of publication is sort of gone. We don't provide access to that. 
we kind of deal them, oh, it's a pain in the neck, we have to get data out of these publications. And we, we don't consider them a really an asset in our science because a lot of our research is in publications. And in fact, any published science is in these publications. So we should really make an effort to change the value that we change that. And by doing that means we, whenever we talk about a, a taxonomic name, we want to be able to actually link it to a taxonomic concept, to a taxonomic treatment. Because only then we, we can leverage the power we have is all these huge libraries and uh, the natural history museums. And I hope I can see that, but right now I'm rather pessimistic that we're going to get there. But it's the young generation, hopefully, to change. Thanks, Donat. Um... David Shorthouse mentions in chat, for what it's worth, I often draw on uh, mostly unspoken traditions in our user acceptance testing and web development when thinking about how to build momentum. Be purpose-driven, deliberate, and find three people whose opinions you respect. Uh, I, David, that very much echoes how we actually decide what to do in Taxon Works. We hear from people who have to do something because they have a grant, because they want to aggregate data, and then we hear it again, and we hear it again, and when we do from those multiple communities, that helps to prioritize us building out the features or the ecosystem around that need. Um, so um, that may prevent us from doing more sort of risky work, but it also really keeps us grounded. Um, I think a big challenge of some of the things that Donut was talking about, um, you know, if we want to have names linked to concepts, well, we have to manage concepts. And just that split is still something that everybody is learning about. When we model that in a database and we give that to a taxonomists, um, they have to understand where to put their data and how to call up their data and how to work with their data on a day-to-day -day basis. That is far from an Excel sheet now to, to meet that vision. Um, so, I, I think that there's a lot of different, I guess to summarize, there's a lot of different axes of challenges there that, that go on to meet that need. I will make one shameless plug that we have started the species file group, the bigger group here. We do much more than taxon works. Um, I have a proof of concept where we're processing in large language models, BHL articles, uh, and we've already built a, a demo app that um, starts to explore exactly Donut's vision of taking publications. And um, I think we'll be happy to share that in the, in the future. And if you want to explore that further, Dimitri uh, Mozeran is, has taken the lead in building out this very cool experiment there. Um, we still have a couple minutes, I think, Debbie, is that right? Till uh, yeah, we have until um, a quarter after the hour, I believe. I'm looking at the yeah. schedule, y'all chip it if you already know. Anybody else Please. want to chime in on their communities, communities needs or challenges or, or what has su been successful? I think there was also a comment about maybe asking Donut what had been successful in growing their community, like um, mm -hmm. from just a, or, or um, I don't want to put you on the spot, Nikki, but the kind of efforts that you've been involved with that are a little less specific to one domain, but what are some of the things maybe we can all chime on that have we've done or our community has done that has catalyzed growth, for example? We could end on some positive notes. So from, there are several Beatle projects scattered around tax on works. And we started conversations about how can we share if we should just come together as a one project of beetle taxonomy. And there are several interested uh, researchers that are working towards their own catalogs. And I guess the problem is we haven't find it, found the time where we can actually get to do it because all of us are working on their own little islands at the moment. But I think that is um, 
like just the fact that people are interested in working together towards building a larger resource that can be used by a, by a broader group of people, that's a good sign, at least at the moment. I would say, Jennifer, especially with the Beetle group, that in my mind, there are several NSF workshop related programs from my experience that we could like you have the people, you have a community, they want to get together. Now we just need resources to bring them together. Let's like let's blitz out Beetle Taxonomy and Taxon Works for a week. I, I can guarantee you that's a sheer bet funding for workshop money in NSF. So the next hurdle that is making a, getting a PI that helps to take that lead. We're also very interested at the Species File Group of figuring out how to better communicate ways to get money to catalyze growth because the reality is is that money is still a bottleneck in a lot of areas um, and we know at the species of group level we have to do better in facilitating how that happens how the facilitating how to take money facilitating how to um, uh, you know see that vision happen in the context of things like taxon works or other efforts so um, yeah that's there's so much potential with that beetle beetle work that's done. I'd say, oh, oh Ming, please, Ming, jump in. Oh, hi, thank you. Oh, uh, I think I would just pivot a little bit to my community, which could be a little different from most of you here because I, I felt like most of you are probably taxonomists and my community are researchers going for expedition in Antarctica. So um, back to what Matt just mentioned to end with positive note. I think the positive note from my side is more and more younger researchers are very keen to share data and share good data. And of course, we have the the challenge that we encounter is that researchers are tracking samples and specimens, but publishing data is in the Darwin Court occurrences event, which is um, which is which is rather different. Uh, but more and more young researchers that I work with um, are capable to do coding and to translate, um, to connect the, the samples and events and convert and convert, transform it into the occurrence view and whatever data standard um, format they, that they need. So I think that makes me very happy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ming. And thanks for participating in our community the last couple of weeks. Uh, Nikki adds, uh, community takes a lot of work, but the positive note is that everything you do is good value for yourself too. Making your decisions explicit, making your projects easy to contribute to. What keeps me awake at night is the many human single points of failure that we have and how that contributes to burnout. Uh, it's very, very true. I think I can personally say I, that hits me. Um, there's a lot of responsibility in what we're doing here. And um, I, I stay up at night thinking about um, how to replace the, the, the uh, core group of excellence in our group and our community over time. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really important to, to think about that balance. I do think that, that the openness of Projects like Taxon Works, where um, the code base is open, we've distributed things in a lot of different ways, um, where we've tried to teach people who collaborate with us that you should think about not just getting into the project, but getting out of the project. What are you going to do? You know, one of, one of the first questions we encourage people to ask is not how how do I migrate to Taxon Works, but what will I do when Taxon Works is gone? And um, I think we've, we've had some nice um, points that we can share in that regard. We've started to document some of that a little bit more 
in a fixed way on our docs.taxonworks.org in terms of migration, et cetera. Um, yeah, Maria Marta, what were you, what did you want to chime in there as we wrap? On a positive, up? very positive side, I would say that uh, is, uh, is a, Taxon Works is really very young and I am, and, and in our, our personal project, we have just, as I said, we moved last year in September. So uh, we have to give time to our community to get used to this new infrastructure. But I see a very promising uh, future for Taxon Works and it's growing fast, very fast relative to the how old it is. So um, I don't know. And also for, for ourselves, I think it's a, the, the movement that we did is extremely, will be extremely positive for our database and for our community. People would have, they have just to see how many tools and things uh, Taxon Works provides for their uh, research. Uh, but I think that's time. He uh, said that learning curve, uh, I, it, it would take a little bit more time. So we'll see next year, maybe in the next Taxon Works together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Maria Marta. Donat, yeah, please chime in. Yeah, I think the learning curve is definitely a big reason to it's better. It, it's really it's difficult to begin, especially if you go into older literature, because it begins from scanning to OCRing, which is very bad, and, and all of that. So, yes, the learning curve is really steep. But so that it's one more reason to think, think in the modern world as great digital data. So when you publish your database, publish in a way it can be machine, machine actionable. If you publish a paper, make sure it's done in a way that it does not need to be processed, but it is automatically in, in text and works and your files. That's extremely important. The rest we can help, but uh, it's just, it's an investment. Learn. Jennifer. So I think another thing that we need to do better is spreading the word, um, letting more people know that all these things are possible. Like I, one of my sort of the dream to the in the future for me with Taxon Works is that students are able to use it for their own projects in taxonomy, phylogenetics, building keys, like the building keys is the one thing that I would love to get to. But these just growing the taxonomic database, cleaning up all the names is taking so long that it seems like getting to the point where we can actually start using these for creating keys and to make information more accessible for everyone. That's the point where I would really love to get to. But I think, yeah, if we let more uh, researchers, students, not only early career, but also people who have been do doing these things for a very long time, if they knew that these tools existed and that everyone, everything is in one place and that many people can work on a project at the same time, probably it would get more the the momentum could be increasing if more people knew about it. Yeah, thanks very much, Jennifer. I agree, and I hope it's been great to see how many people have stuck with us this morning from the get go and have been staying here. And hopefully, opportunities like this here and hearing from you and all the panelists this morning um, can encourage us to help get the word out. Debbie, do we, we're sort of at time. Do we want to wrap up and? Yep. 